So this is the last video on the kidney, so module five, uh, the first chapter in there. And this is the final uh, lesson is about the uses of urine in medical diagnosis. So this is what the specification says. You need to know how excretory products can be used in medical diagnosis to include the use of urine samples in diagnostic tests with reference to the use of monoclonal antibodies in pregnancy testing and testing for anabolic steroids and drugs. So the obvious one you can test in urine for is glucose. We're not going to spend too much time looking at that, but uh, you can test for glucose in the urine. You can also test for protein in the urine, but we're going to look at how we test for pregnancy, anabolic steroids and drugs. So let's start by having a look at a pregnancy test. You did cover this uh, in year 10, you've probably forgotten, but you did cover this. And we're going to start off by looking at how the pregnancy test works. So the pregnancy test works because it detects this specific hormone, human chorionic gonadotrophin. And it is a hormone that has only produced by the fetus during implantation after about six days. So basically, this is produced, it passes from the uh, fetal through the umbilical cord into the mother's blood. The blood is obviously then filtered by the kidney. The kidney then filters this because it's small, but there is no mechanism to reabsorb it, so it ends up being passed out in the urine and it's tested and detected using a pregnancy test. So the way the pregnancy test works is within the pregnancy test, there are monoclonal antibodies. Now, unlike at GCSE, where you had to know how monoclonal antibodies are produced, you do not need to know that for your A-level. You need to know that these antibodies, though, are specifically made to be complementary to human chorionic gonadotrophin or HCG. So these antibodies, these monoclonal antibodies, so monoclonal because they're only one and there's lots of them, they are clones, they are specific to HCG. And in a pregnancy test, they are mobile. They are part of what we call the mobile phase. So if we have a look at a pregnancy testing strip, there are three areas on the pregnancy testing strip. So there is this area down here where we have our mobile phase. So our mobile phase are these monoclonal antibodies here. We have immobilized antibodies here, okay, and then we have immobilized antibodies here. So we have mobile monoclonal antibodies, immobilized monoclonal antibodies, immobilized monoclonal antibodies. So you we on the end of the stick. If there is human chorionic gonadotrophin in that strip, sorry, in that urine even, they will bind to these monoclonal antibodies. These are monoclonal antibodies to human chorionic gonadotrophin. Okay, so stage one, the human chorionic gonadotrophin molecules move up in the urine. When they get to these monoclonal antibodies, they will bind, okay? Now, you will notice that there are many more monoclonal antibodies to HCG than there are HCG molecules. So this means that moving up the test strip, there are both free monoclonal antibodies to HCG and what is now going to be referred to as the monoclonal antibody HCG complex. All of these carry on through capillary action moving up through the pregnancy test. When they get to this, these immobilized monoclonal antibodies here, these are monoclonal antibodies to the HCG monoclonal antibody complex. So if the woman is pregnant and there is HCG in the urine, and it's bound to monoclonal antibodies, when these molecules here get to this area here, 
they become bound to the immobilized test uh, mono, sorry immobilized monoclonal antibodies here okay now what there's one of two things happens here sometimes these monoclonal antibodies have a little colored dye on the end of them so they all line up and make this line go colored or sometimes they contain an enzyme which reacts with chemicals in the pregnancy test and cause a colored line to appear so if someone is pregnant if there's hcg in her urine then it will move up it will bind with the uh Immobilize enzymes here to the monoclonal antibody HCG complex, and they will all stay there. Meanwhile, these free monoclonal antibodies that didn't bind to HCG because there was not enough HCG to bind to them, they will continue to move up the strip, and they will then bind to these immobilized monoclonal antibodies here. These are complementary to purely these monoclonal antibodies here. Okay, so the excess mobile antibodies, they bind the immobilized antibodies to them. They're not antibodies to monoclonal antibody anti uh, HCG complex. They're just to the monoclonal antibodies. Okay, and they will form another colored strip or line, either by, as I said, lining up the dye on the end or an enzyme reacting with a chemical and making a colored line. So therefore, if you are pregnant, two lines will appear on your strip. This line here is the control line. This line here tells you that the test is working. So that everything is moving up by capillary action and the monoclonal antibodies that were all located down here are mobile enough to move all the way up to the top. So this strip here is your control. So if you're pregnant, you get two lines appearing. If you're not pregnant, you just get this one at the top. Okay, and here are a couple of examples. Uh, oh, wait a second of some positive pregnancy tests. Meanwhile, let's just watch this animation. A urine sample can be tested to determine whether a woman is pregnant. The number of colored bands on a test strip determines whether the result is positive or negative. The urine of pregnant women contains a hormone called human chorionic gonadotropin, or HCG. HCG is produced by the developing placenta and has important functions in pregnancy. However, some of this hormone is also excreted in the woman's urine. Women who are not pregnant do not produce HCG. A pregnancy test is based on the ability of proteins called antibodies placed on commercially prepared test strips to bind to HCG in the urine. The test strips contain three zones of function, here labeled R, T, and C, to indicate a reaction zone, test zone, and control zone. The reaction zone contains a type of antibody that recognizes and binds to HCG molecules and is therefore called an anti-HCG antibody. The letter E signifies that these antibodies have been linked to enzymes that can participate in color reactions on the test strip. Like the reaction zone, the test zone contains anti-HCG antibodies. In addition, this zone contains dye molecules that will participate in the color reactions. The control zone also contains dye molecules for the color reactions. The antibodies in the control zone are called anti-mouse antibodies. These anti-mouse antibodies will recognize and bind to the antibodies currently in the reaction zone because the reaction zone antibodies were made in a mouse. The urine of a pregnant woman yields a positive test result. To determine this result, the test strip is dipped in the urine sample. The sample, which contains HCG, is drawn up the strip by capillary action and arrives at the reaction zone. The enzyme-linked antibodies recognize parts of the HCG molecules and bind to these molecules from the urine. The complexes of HCG and antibodies, as well as the unbound antibodies, dissolve in the fluid and detach from the capillary membrane. They're carried along the test strip by the capillary flow. At the test zone, other anti-HCG antibodies bind to the HCG portions of the moving complexes. The antibodies in this zone are permanently affixed to the strip, so the complexes that bind here now stay the free antibodies continue to flow along the strip. The antibodies that escaped binding in the test zone have reached the control zone. 
Here, anti-mouse antibodies that are affixed to the strip bind to these mouse antibodies. In the test zone, the enzyme-linked antibodies catalyze a reaction with the dye molecules, which act as substrates and trigger a color reaction. The same type of reaction occurs in the control zone. In a positive test, two of the three bands are colored, but in a negative test, only one is colored. This difference results from a lack of HCG in the woman's urine. In urine lacking HCG, when the sample flows to the reaction zone, the antibodies have nothing to bind to. The antibodies detach from the reaction zone and migrate alone up the test strip. The enzyme-linked antibodies arrive at the test zone. Because the migrating antibodies are not carrying HCG molecules, the immobilized anti-HCG antibodies in the test zone are not able to snare them. The antibodies continue to travel along the strip. The control zone contains anti-mouse antibodies that bind to regions of the traveling antibodies and thereby immobilize them. The control zone is an important region that helps distinguish whether the strips are working correctly. If the strip is working correctly and if the woman is not pregnant, the control zone will produce a color reaction, but the test zone will not. Okay, so, we'll just watch that. Um, a positive test, it says there you get two lines. Okay, so there's an example of a positive test. A negative test, you just get the one line, so that shows you that the test is working, but you're not pregnant. Now, some companies have done some very clever things with these. They've perhaps put them to make a cross. So that would be your control, that would be your positive. Okay. Um, some managed to turn that into a digital symbol, uh, sorry, result, so you can see it digitally. They all work in exactly the same way. So, anabolic steroids. You've probably heard of anabolic steroids. Anabolic steroids are drugs that are used uh, by athletes, for example, and bodybuilders to increase muscle mass. So they would be used by sprinters, weightlifters, uh, people that are doing uh, athletics where you need to you know, quite a lot of bulk. Um, they're illegal to take in sport and basically the urine of the athletes can be randomly tested. And what they do is they will take a sample of the urine and they analyse it using gas chromatography and mass spectrometry. You do not need to know how those work, although I believe you will learn how those work in A-level chemistry. But essentially what happens is the urine is vaporised and passed through a column. The basic size of the molecule determines how quickly it comes out of the end of the column, like uh, in chromatography, the size of the molecule determines how far it goes through the stationary phase. And then the mass spectrometer then works out what that actual chemical is. Okay, but that's as much about this as you need to know. They're analysed using gas chromatography and mass spectrometry, and they can detect very small amounts of anabolic steroids within an athlete's urine. Other drugs that can be tested for, okay, so lots of drugs, all of the drugs that you take end up being processed through your liver. The liver releases certain breakdown products, they pass in the blood into the kidney, and they then get filtered, and again, because there is no mechanism to reabsorb them, they will pass out in the urine. Uh, we can then test those using monoclonal antibodies. So if you can make a monoclonal antibody to a particular drug and it can bind to it and it can give off a particular colour, or you can do the gas chromatography mass spectrometry method of testing for anabolic steroids. And then depending on how long the, uh, you've taken the drug, they can persist in the urine for these different amounts of time. So alcohol between uh, 6 to 24 hours, amphetamines 1 to 3 days, cannabis 22 hours to 30 days, depending on how regularly you use it, and cocaine between 2 to 5 days. You can still get traces of these drugs in your urine. So that's all that you really need to know about uh, the use of diagnostics using urine.